Welcome back. So we're going to continue here in chapter 10 thinking about uh, growth and what has happened with growth over the last uh, sort of 50 to 70 years, both in sort of the richer countries uh, in the world and also in the poorer countries. Obviously, one of the most important questions is whether or not we'll end up with what economists call convergence. And convergence is the idea that all countries eventually will end up with a similar level of uh, GDP per capita. Um, they don't have to be exactly the same, right? The last time we talked about the uh, example of the United States and France, where the United States has a higher GDP per capita, but the GDP per hour worked is more or less the same, and France just chooses to work less. Um, another historical example was Japan growing in the 1970s and 80s. It was growing extremely fast. Uh, people felt like they were going to become much richer than the United States. Um, but eventually, as they approached the level of the United States and other Western European countries that slowed down, and now basically we're at a similar level. Um, so they that was an example of convergence. And now, of course, we have countries like uh, China and to a somewhat lesser extent India growing quite quickly. Um, and so the question is, will they be able to converge to the level of uh, the other rich countries in the world? Um, and obviously this is important because, you know, we still have some very, very poor countries in the world and bringing them uh, up to a, a level of the United States and Western Europe um, and Japan and, and countries like that will help alleviate a lot of uh, sort of global poverty. Um, it will do a lot to reduce overall inequality in the world. Um, and we also want to think, of course, about, you know, what that would mean for um, the world's resources. And, and, you know, can we all be as rich as the United States? Um, I think the answer is yes, but, but there's obviously a caveat there. Um, so this is, we're going to look first at growth in rich countries, the sort of OECD, right, which is the Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development. Um, and what we see is, you know, if we look at annual growth rate in output per person, so GDP per capita, um, most countries have been in that sort of two to two and a half percent range. And Japan, which I just mentioned, uh, has grown more quickly. But most of that growth was in the early period, and then in the later period, uh, it slowed down. So if we look at real output per person, right, and these are from the Penn World Table, so these are PPP dollars, um, France was around 6,500, Japan was significantly uh, poor at 2,800, the UK was at 9,600, uh, the US was already the richest country in the world at that point, so 12,700. Um, and then by 2011, they had converged to pretty similar levels, right? As you can see, you know, France, Japan, and the UK were lower than the United States, but, um, you know, by less, right? By about 25% rather than, you know, 20%, uh, or, you know, it was 20% of what it was in 1950. And so Japan, which had been the poorest country in 1950 of these four, um, certainly not the poorest country in the world in 1950, uh, they, you know, their real GDP per capita was 11 times higher in 2011 than it was in 1950, whereas the U.S. and the U.K. were only 3.3 times higher. Um, and France, which had been sort of below the U.K. level, was 4.6 times higher. Um, and so we can look at, you know, more countries and sort of look at, okay, where were they in terms of GDP per person in 1960? Um, and then what is their uh, annual growth rate of GDP per person? And you can see the countries that started off poorer uh, grew faster, and then the countries that were richer grew slower. And so we did end up with some convergence, right? Now, we're kind of cherry picking our data here because this, these are the countries that are currently in the OECD, which are the richest countries in the world. Um, but this is, I think, important to think about, right? We have had some convergence. Uh, so, you know, that implies that, you know, everybody gets up to a, a similar level, which is mostly uh, dependent on whatever the sort of world's uh, most recent level of technology is. Um, and then we all kind of grow at whatever the level of technology is growing at. 
Um, if we think sort of more broadly, right, one of the obvious uh, sort of economic historical questions was why we didn't grow for so long and then why we started to grow. And so, you know, if we think about the Malthusian trap, um, Thomas Malthus basically was looking at historical data uh, in the early 19th century um, and saying, you know, we don't grow in output per person because every time we have some sort of new technology, um, that only in increases population and then population increases and output per person just stays the same. And we're sort of stuck at this level of, you know, just enough food for the, the average person to eat to survive. Um, and it was really not until the you know, sort of 18th century in England, 19th century in the United States that the Industrial Revolution really took off. Um, and we started getting uh, sustained growth of sort of one to two percent. Uh, and then in the 20th century, where we started getting growth of, you know, that sort of two to three percent um, range. And I think it's important you can sort of use that uh, rule of 70 to figure out how long something takes to double. So if you're growing at two percent per year, then GDP per capita is doubling every 35 years at 70 divided by two. If you're growing at seven percent per year, like China has recently, then you're doubling GDP per capita every 10 years. Right. And that's <laughs> fairly amazing. 70, you know, divided by seven is 10. So now, you know, every 10 years, every generation, every 20 years, you're doubling twice. So it's four times as, as much, uh, which is pretty amazing. Um, so if we think about, you know, where have we been, right? So now here we have a broader look at this same type of graph where the OECD countries, the rich countries are in uh, blue diamonds. Uh, Africa is in red squares and Asia is in um, these uh, orange triangles. And what you can see is certainly that the OECD started off richer and we had that sort of downward sloping relationship. Um, African countries have experienced very mixed growth. Um, some have grown uh, pretty fast, that sort of 3%, 3 to 4% per year. Um, and some have not grown at all, and some have even shrunk since 1960. Now, obviously, Africa um, in the 1960 time period is finally throwing off its colonialism. Um, and, you know, part of the legacy that the Europeans left was, you know, really bad institutions, really bad infrastructure. I mean, they had basically been using these countries in order to enrich themselves. And so they did not put um, most African countries in a good position to uh, succeed and to grow. Um, and I mean, you could argue the same thing about South Asia. Um, and it wasn't really until sort of the 1980s, early 1990s um, that we see some significant growth uh, in you know countries like India. Um, we do see some really high growth in some Asian countries, right? So we've seen high growth in countries like South Korea like Taiwan, now like China, um, and and those countries have really sort of converged to the OECD level in terms of GDP per capita. So do we have convergence? Are we going to get to convergence um, in GDP per capita? I mean, I think in the long run, we probably will, but that long run could be 100 or 200 years. We have seen some convergence, right? I mentioned some of those countries. Um, but we still have a lot of countries that are quite poor, both in Africa, um, in parts of Central and South Asia, uh, and in Latin America. Um, and so we haven't seen as much convergence there. Uh, and I think, you know, if economists can figure out the, the right advice to give to these countries and then the countries can implement that advice, um, then I think that would be, you know, one of the most beneficial things that economics can do.